Welcome back to Retro Tech Toys. Today we're going to be doing something with the Raspberry Pi 4. I want to check out iRaspian, which I just discovered the other day. And uh, it's a version of Raspian that's skinned to look like Mac OS X. And I dig that a lot. All you really need is a Raspberry Pi 4, a keyboard, and a mouse. And, optional, you can have a green cheek if you'd like. Link is going to be here with me, so you don't get Link, so you need to bring your own green cheek. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. Checking out this here, as you can see, it looks exactly like OS X. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous in every single way. I uh, was looking through here last night, and it's just really nice. It's buttery smooth in most applications. I don't have my Raspberry Pi overclocked because other people have done videos with theirs overclocked and I wanted to show how this would perform on a completely stock Raspberry Pi 4. So you just use Etcher, flash it, and I'll have a link below for the image. Anyway, as you can see, uh, we're going to use Media Edition of Chromium to check out YouTube and you can surf Netflix and all sorts of video and media sites on that. Now, if you decide you want to do some regular web surfing, uh, you really do need to use the regular edition of Chromium, which is also present on this installation. But as you can see, it runs YouTube okay. Uh, we're going to go to full screen here to see if it does the full screen mode. And uh, there's a little bit of lag there, but it eventually pops into it. And you might see just a little bit of issue here, but it eventually starts playing pretty well. I don't have sound hooked up to mine right now, I'm just using an average HDMI monitor and I don't have speakers on that monitor, so I can't get the sound off of this thing right now and I don't have anything plugged into the 3.5 jack. Alright, so yeah, YouTube works great on it and I know for a fact that Netflix and Amazon Video and all that stuff works too, so let's go ahead and check out some other stuff. And there's the uh, editions of Chrome. You've got Media Edition and you have the regular edition. So if you want to browse the internet, like I said, you just uh, you just pull up Chromium, the regular version. Now the Media Edition is a little bit buggy for regular web browsing. So let's just check this out on the regular version of Chromium. I'm going to the Apple website, which is pretty image heavy. And everything loads and it's super smooth. So there are no problems there. Super awesome. And, uh, I mean, gosh, I'm just so impressed with this. Like I've said before, I've said it a thousand times, I know already. But I'm really impressed with this, and I may end up using this because I really love the look of OS X. So this is quite pleasing to me. All right, let's check out all these apps. As you can see, you've got, like, LibreOffice, and you've got all these great apps that are already pre-installed. So you don't have to do a single thing. Uh, you can go check out some of the... Uh, other repositories and stuff if you want to install things. I'm not going to do any video on installing other apps. Also, I wanted to say that Steam works on this, but it's highly, highly, highly experimental. So be careful uh, with that. There's not very much that works with it. But here is a, another remake of Metroid 2, as it's called. Uh, you can see it starts off a little bit slow, but then it loads pretty well after that. And uh, you could sit there and play that, and there are a bunch of other great games installed. Uh, we're going to also check out Minecraft Pi Edition, which typically comes on Raspbian. So you can see there, that looks fantastic, this uh, Metroid remake. Now let's go ahead and check out that version of Minecraft Pi Edition. Just scroll on over here and start it up, and we'll see how that loads on a stock Raspberry Pi 4 in iRaspbian. Yeah, it looks like it's doing really well to me. I don't see any major issues at all. The game's running rather smoothly. Um, you know, it's extremely playable, as I expected it to be anyway. Yeah, I'm trying to do some things to see if I can get it to slow down. And no, it's running, again, buttery smooth. Let's get this closed out, and there are a couple other things I wanted to show you as well. One of my favorite things about this is you get several different emulators. The first being a Mac 
OS 9.2 emulator. Now I'm going to speed this up because this takes quite a while to load. So I've sped this up about four or five hundred percent. This does take about two or three minutes to load up, at least on the stock Pi. I know it's a bit faster when you overclock, of course. All right, it's about loaded up, so let's look around and see what you got here. This is one of my favorite older Mac operating systems, so I was really, really happy to see that the emulator for this was included. I'm definitely going to be playing around with it a whole lot. I have heard that the included Windows 98 emulator is a lot more useful than this one. Um, this one was just kind of made uh, for fun from what I read, but I think it looks really good. You can check out your emulated system specs there and it's got all the stuff that you'd expect in OS 9.2 you know all these goodies here and you could even go down and mess with your display settings and all that good stuff just like you would if you were on a retro power Mac or something else that would run 9.2 so yeah all your options down here work uh, it does run just a little bit slow like I said on the stock Pi 4 but that's okay uh, also, I just wanted to point out that I have heard that this will work on the Raspberry Pi 3, but there are some settings that you have to tweak. I have not tried it. There are other videos out there that talk more about that. If you're interested in doing that, I don't really use my Pi 3 for things like this. If it's uh, going to be more of an intensive type program or operating system, I use the Pi 4. All right, let's get ready to get out of this because I really want to check out the Windows 98 emulator. Oh, uh, a side note, the sound does not work in the OS 9.2 emulator as of now. Uh, I think they are working on it. All right, here we go. We've got the Windows 98 emulator pulled up and uh, it takes a little while to load, but it's nowhere near as long as the uh, Mac OS 9.2 emulator. So. I haven't sped this up at all. I'm just going to let it load like normal. Again, if you overclock, this will probably be significantly faster, but I want it to show performance uh, on a stock Raspberry Pi 4 because I find that to be very interesting. I do like overclocking as well, but I don't think the stock Pi gets enough love. All right, it's just about loaded up. Almost there. There we go. As you can see, we've got a very, very well functioning Windows 98 emulator. Again, with everything that you would expect on Windows 98. You've got your Internet Explorer up there. You've got all of your typical icons. And uh, you can go in here to the Start menu. And all the stuff that you'd expect to be there is there. And uh, I think I'd like to play a quick game of Tetris in a second here. So <laughs> we might end up doing that. And another thing I'd like to mention, just so you know, this uh, OS is not OS X. Uh, this is iRaspian. This is a skin that is laid on top of Raspian with some other tweaks to make it look like OS X. So we are not emulating OS X here. It's Raspian. It's Linux. It looks like OS X. I just want to be very, very, very specific and let you know that. Anyway, here's Tetris running in Windows 98. It runs pretty smoothly. I don't profess to be the best Tetris player. But I just wanted to show you that you can have this running through the emulator and it works fine. All your Windows 98 functions are there, as far as I can tell. And I'm going to just about get out of this because I want to start to wrap things up here. I didn't want to keep this video running for too long. I just wanted to show everybody this version of Raspbian and just talk about it a little bit because I really, really like it a lot. 
All right, one more thing I'd like to mention. There's a README file that's up there at the corner of your desktop, and you should really click that before you do anything else and read through it so you can be familiarized with what this is and what it does. You know, it also talks about its development and how far it is and all that good stuff. So give that a read before you do anything else. And uh, that's about all I have for today. I'll be back. I've got some really cool restoration videos with some retro PCs coming up and a bunch of other different things. So thank you so much for watching Retro Tech Toys. I really appreciate it. If you'd like and subscribe, if you enjoy the content, see you next time.